Orkney is an archipelago of 70 islands in northern Scotland. They are remote, peaceful, wild, and unbelievably beautiful. Some of the islands are connected to mainland Orkney via man-made roads, though some can only be reached by plane or by boat. On our previous vlog, we shared with you the isles which could be reached by the Churchill Barriers. But now it's time to venture a little bit further to islands with very few inhabitants, but filled with remarkable scenery and history. And today we're starting with Hoy. We're Brian and Crystal, and this is Von Hala Adventures. Good morning, everybody. We're on our way over to Hoi today, which is the second biggest island, and its name means High Island. So it definitely has, like I can see it right now, and it's definitely like way more mountainous. And I was looking at pictures, it kind of reminds me of Isle of Skye, not quite as dramatic. I think that's it right over here. I'm pretty stoked because today is a hiking day and exploring a couple other things. I'm gonna see the old man of the boy. You got the gear? I was gonna bring sunglasses, but I think we're good. <laughs> <laughs> the beach is beautiful. I can't imagine what it looks like here in the summertime. Yeah, look at that. Pure white beach. Yeah. So beautiful. This new shirt from Woolex. Yeah. And I got this Henley. You look pretty oh, hot. Wow. Yeah. It is. And it's what? It's like 45 out here or something? Yeah. I'm fine without a jacket, just wearing these two layers. You look nice. Oh, it's so soft. It's not scratchy kind of wool. It's nice and soft wool. Yeah. You're good. not one other person on this trail and it's so quiet and it's so peaceful and it's so beautiful it's so nice sometimes i go to places and i wish there were people around you know what i mean you're like hey, i probably feel a bit safer or just a bit i don't know it's just about that inner comfort you know but here, it just feels like we're just supposed to be here. 
I have a lot of anxiety when I'm in the U.S. I just don't get that here at all. I would definitely suggest this for those of you who maybe struggle with anxiety and just don't like being around a lot of people and just want to be in nature. Orkney Islands are incredible for that calm sense of peace or just a break from hustle and bustle of life just in general, even if you don't have anxiety. This is incredible. Brian and I just realized we were in such awe and just the amazement of that old man of Hoy and just all the cliffs surrounding it. We didn't even say anything. I don't know if anything actually needs to be said about this. Anyways, I was reading on All Trails a review for this walk, and somebody said it was well worth coming halfway across the world for it. And I thought, mm, I don't know, that's a pretty big statement. But now that we've been there, Fred and I were like, yeah, it's worth it. It was definitely worth it. Yeah. That was amazing. Yeah, if we did nothing else but come here, make the 36 hour flight Ooh. just to see that and just relax just on Hoi. That'd be good. It'd be worth it. Yeah. So last night I was doing some research on Hoi and I came across this story of a woman named Betty. And I thought it was absolutely fascinating and I wanted to stop here because I, it, I just think it's, I don't know, it's just interesting. So Betty was a young woman in the 1700s and she became pregnant by a sailor who left, went back out to sea, never came back. So she was unmarried and she was pregnant. So during that time, of course, this did not fare well on the island. So because of all the shame she experienced, she tried killing herself once by walking out to sea, but she was rescued during that process. However, a few days later, she hung herself. So she committed suicide. But because of the shame and what she had done, they wouldn't allow her to be buried within the parish, um, what'd you say, the parish boundaries. So she was put in a box and buried in an unmarked grave. They didn't even mark her grave for her. But eventually in the 1900s, some guys were out here cutting peat and they came across the box where she was. And so they ended up finally marking a grave for her resting place. And it's known as the loneliest grave in the UK. And I just thought that story was so sad that this woman took her life because she was pregnant. And so now I just thought it was kind of cool to come visit. And from what I read online, people come visit her just to pay their respects to her. And, um, you know, it's kind of almost like she's looking at you while you're leaving, they said. You can kind of just feel the energy of it. So I thought it was an interesting place. And it's right off the road when you're going back to the ferry or coming from on the way to Old Man of Hoy. So we're going to go check it out. Go say hi to Betty.
think one thing that's been really interesting about this entire time that we've spent here in the Orkney Islands so far is just the presence of, of death. It's reminding me of the preciousness of life, of how short this life is here, whether you believe in reincarnation, multiple lives, or just this one life. But I think about that every day, that we really don't have that much time. And what do we want to use our time for? And, and just sometimes the pettiness, I guess, of arguments and things like that, that this young woman, just thinking about it, she was shamed so much that she took her own life, that she felt she had no other choice. And I just think about how we treat people and just how I want to live and how I even want to treat Brian. You know, so that he always feels valued, feels seen, and just everybody we come in contact to. And I also think that here, it's almost... <laughs> I don't know, when I walked the Camino de Santiago, it was a pilgrimage and it just kind of slowed down enough for you to kind of, I don't know, I felt I could have more conversations, more human connection. And here I also feel that I've we've slowed down enough to have that and have these reflections about, you know, and seeing how they used to live in Neolithic times, prehistoric times, makes me reflect on how I want to live now because it's so go, go, go often. And I think that's why we keep coming back here. We like the, the slowness, the peace, the calm, and the connection with nature. So all these thoughts are going through my head and Betty, well, she may have crossed over. For me, that's what she left for me is that reflection, if that makes sense. So we're here during the month of November. And as you can see, we have had amazing weather. The only time it's rained has been at night when we've been sleeping. And we've noticed because this is our third, is this our third trip to Scotland? Yep. Third trip to Scotland. And talking with the locals and what they said, it doesn't matter if it's winter. It doesn't matter if it's summer. The weather's kind of all over the place, which is different from what we're used to in the States is that we can pretty much say summer is going to be nice. It's going to be hot. But Scotland's all over the place. You don't know if you're going to get a really nice day in the summer or if you're going to get a really nice day in the winter. So I, w I think actually coming during this off season is really nice because if you're coming to the Orkney Isles in summer, they have cruise ships that come in all the time and thousands and thousands of people, they said, it's packed with tourists from the cruise ships. And so they're all gonna be basically going to the same places, um, which are these different historical landmarks, hanging out in Kirkwall and Stromness and things like that. So if you want to have a little bit more peace and quiet, have places to yourself, go during the off season. And we've had amazing weather. Actually, I think it's been such nice weather. Uh, you know, we did pack yeah. like all our wool stuff and whatnot, but I'm really glad that we're doing it right now. Aren't you? Yeah, I can't beat this weather. It's amazing. Yeah, just a little tip. Go on the off season. November's been great. I mean, amazing weather. This is quite a process. Okay, well, apparently you got to drive onto the ferry in reverse. You, All right. you did it! All right. Right next to the ferry terminal, we found the heritage site and decided to pop in to get an idea of what the island has to offer. And it was so much better than we could have expected. I put together our itinerary based on things I found on the Historic Environment Scotland website and on orkney.com. However, looking around this heritage center, 
There is so much history here with Viking settlements. Wow, this is cool. Browsey is the sixth largest island in Orkney, known as the Egypt of the North, thanks to its collection of more than 150 ancient sites, a few of which we will be visiting today, starting with a 4,500 year old burial chamber. So the thing that's so unique about this particular cairn is that it has two chambers. So it's a two story cairn. So we're gonna go climb in. This is one of 15 chambered tombs on Rousey that were used for communal burial. Wow, this is amazing how they made this. Just stacked rocks. Wow, that is not what I expected. For any of the excursions we're doing on the islands, you're gonna be walking on a lot of foggy, wet grass farmlands. I would wear waterproof shoes and also your pants might get a little dirty too, so just keep that in mind. Only a brief drive up the road is our second chamber tomb. This one contained the remains of at least 29 people and the bones from at least 36 deer. Ah, I find it fascinating how many carns there are here on the Isles. There's 15 just on Rousey itself. And four of these are in the care of uh, Historic Environment Scotland, but they're all on farmer's land too, which I find interesting. So. It's, I don't know. I just, it's kind of crazy, I guess, compared mm -hmm. to anything in the US, you know? Yeah. And it's just so much, so old. This tomb is the largest on the island, and the modern hangar helps preserve this seemingly enormous site from the elements. And the raised walkways allow you to see down into the tomb itself, which gave us this incredible view. The remains of at least 25 humans have been found here, along with pottery, worked flint, and animal bones. Upright slabs projecting from the walls inside divide the tomb into 12 different stalls. So the original owner of Highland Park Distillery is was actually the one, he, he lived on Rousey, and he's the one that excavated it and then gave um, it back to the nation from what I read from the sign back there. And now that we're here, I'm like, it makes sense that Highland Park Distillery is so, has such a Viking brand. Yeah. <laughs> Why it just occurred to me. Get it now. Yeah. yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah, it's really cool. That's some old school design right there. Yeah. yeah. This Iron Age settlement, known as Midhow Brock, is one of at least nine rocks that stand along the banks of narrow, dangerous Ein Hallow Sound in Orkney. Rocks are unique to Scotland, with more than 500 surviving examples. As you can see, they have two stone walls separated by this inner gap, which house small rooms, storage areas, and steps that led to upper wooden platforms. Inside a rock is a circular courtyard, which most likely had a thatched roof at one point. This is bananas. You can kind of see where there would have been what we know as stories, like this would have been one, and then this would have been a second one, and then a third one right up there. I'm fascinated by this. This is definitely a highlight of this entire trip here on the Orkney Islands. Yeah, I agree. I'm really fascinated by this. Midhow is in an excellent state of preservation, so you can really get a feel for what it was like here thousands of years ago. At one point, it was also surrounded by other smaller buildings as well. This is a pretty blanket statement, but I feel like back in the day, they used to always have 
the hearth in the center of the house. And I like it that way. I don't know why we always put the kitchens in the, you know, off to the side. I'm trying to always be in the kitchen, eating that food, having a good time, keep it warm. Whoa, I didn't even realize. Wow, look at that. Look at this, just that perfectly round. And this, look at how perfect that is. Yeah, this is just really incredible. I'm, I'm really just impressed. It's a good workout. Come back up this big hill. So you can see it's way down there. That's a good workout, but as long as you have the right shoes, it's really not a big deal. But still, yeah. Mm. Oh, water, oh. Brian and I also realized there's like, there's no place to even get water on these islands except for the mainland. So bring literally everything you think you're gonna wanna ingest. <laughs> That was basically the entire island. It's a pretty small island. Yeah, <laughs> it's tiny. Sadly, our time in Orkney has come to an end. Yeah. But our adventures are not over yet, and we will see you in... Budapest!